We spend a lot of time educating people on various topics related to stock markets, be it simple stock investing or understanding complex derivative products. But the underlying assumption here is that you have your personal finance sorted out even before you get into trading or investing in the markets. If your personal finance situation is not sorted, then I'm afraid you're starting your financial journey on the wrong note. And it's time to fix that. Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa, and in this short video series, I will be talking to you about personal finance and the best practices that you need to have in place to start your personal finance journey. I would suggest you watch this video series as a very first step in your financial journey. By the way, many people ask me if we have a finance course for beginners without really specifying what they mean by a finance course. But my guess is people are looking for a personal finance kickstarter course. If you're one of them looking for such a finance course, then I would suggest you watch these short videos. In this video, I'll be talking to you about the very first step you need to take in your personal finance journey. That is saving money for an emergency situation. Let me share a personal story with you. It was the year 2020 and I guess we all know that it was a horrible year. Work from home was a norm, so was schooling from home. Suddenly, I had to upgrade the IT infrastructure in the house. I had to buy two laptops, a printer, a better router and a better broadband connection. If you remember, laptops were not easily available in 2020 because of the supply chain and COVID constraints. Whatever was available was available at a premium. We had no option but to shell out extra money to purchase these equipments. A few weeks later, both my parents contracted COVID. We were in the first wave of COVID and there was quite a bit of panic around. Finding a hospital bed was nearly impossible. But we got lucky, somehow found a hospital bed for both my parents. But the treatment costs were exorbitant. It was a few lakhs per head. And I wasn't even sure if my insurance would cover for COVID treatment. The reason why I'm sharing this with you all is to highlight the fact that within a few weeks, all of a sudden, I was faced with a situation where I had to spend a lot of money. I'm sure you too would have faced such a situation in life. Emergencies can come unannounced and when they do, it can be financially draining. While the emergency and the nature of emergency is not in our control, what is in our control is our preparedness to face such an emergency situation. Preparedness in terms of having an emergency corpus. Luckily, I was able to manage the situation because I had an emergency corpus in place. The purpose of an emergency corpus or an emergency fund is to help you deal with the emergency and not let you scramble for funds at the last minute. Imagine, in an emergency situation, you are already under significant stress because of the circumstance you are in. If you don't have the money to deal with the situation, then that will be an added additional stress. I hope by now I've convinced you enough as to why you need to have an emergency fund. Let us talk about how to build an emergency corpus and preserve the same. The very first step is to estimate the quantum of corpus you would need as emergency fund. Some experts say that you need at least six months of expenses stashed away as an emergency corpus. Personally, I don't subscribe to this thought. Each family is different, each family's requirements are different. What would work for your family may not work for my family. Given this, it is best to sit with your family with your loved ones and figure out what would work as an emergency corpus for your family. It could be 6 months, 10 months or even 15 months of expenses. There is no right or wrong number here. The right number is that number that gives you and your family peace of mind and lets you sleep well at night. For the sake of this discussion, let's assume that number is 10 months expenses or maybe about 5 lakhs in rupee terms. Now that you've identified what is the corpus requirement, the next step is to figure out how you can accumulate this corpus. The most common approach is to save little by little every month till you hit the targeted emergency corpus number. Or if you have a large corpus, it makes sense to first carve out the emergency corpus and park it separately. If you take this approach, in a few months you can build your first emergency corpus. Now, once you've accumulated the corpus, the next step is to figure out how to park those funds. When it comes to maintaining emergency funds, one of the most common mistakes that people do is that they invest this fund either in a stock or a portfolio of stock or even an equity mutual fund. This is one of the silliest financial mistakes that you can do. Remember, 
The reason why you've saved for an emergency fund is that it is available to you in full when you need it. Investing your emergency money in stocks or equity mutual fund means that you are inducing volatility in your funds. And this can be a fatal mistake in times of emergency. I would suggest you invest your emergency funds in financial products that have low volatility. A simple fixed deposit will do the trick. Alternatively, you can even consider short-term bond funds or even a liquid fund. The idea with emergency fund is to have quick access to the funds and also have full capital protection. A financial product that does not fit into this definition cannot be your vehicle to save your emergency corpus. Having said that, I have split my emergency corpus into two vehicles, a classic FD and an arbitrage fund. Arbitrage funds invest in arbitrage opportunities in equity markets and by definition, arbitrage positions are hedged and bring in very little risk. If you're not familiar with arbitrage funds, then I would encourage you to read this chapter on Varsity where I've explained arbitrage funds in detail. One last thing. Let's say you pick an instrument of your choice and park your emergency funds in it. Maybe a liquid fund. When an emergency strikes, you need access to the funds immediately. But a liquid fund, although very liquid, still needs T plus one day for full settlement. Which means that you may not have access to your funds immediately and there could be a one or two day waiting period. How would you deal with this? Well, in such a situation, there is absolutely nothing wrong to use your credit card as a source of funds. Use it to pay for the emergency, utilize the 25 day free credit your bank would give you, and repay the credit card bill as soon as you receive money from your liquid funds. This is one of the smarter ways to use a credit card and the free grace period that your bank would give you. I will talk more about credit cards in the third video in the series where I will be talking about borrowings. By the way, once you've tapped into your emergency corpus and utilized a portion of it, do not forget to rebuild that corpus. Another common mistake that I've seen people do is with great difficulty, they will build their emergency corpus, but they end up utilizing this fund for lifestyle purposes. Maybe buying that new iPhone or maybe going on that fancy European holiday. When you build an emergency corpus, you need to be completely aware of the reason why you've built this in the first place. Going on a European holiday is not an emergency situation. I hope you guys get started on your personal finance journey by building an emergency corpus. If you guys have already built an emergency corpus, then do comment below and let me know what is your preferred financial instrument to save these funds. In the next video, I'll talk to you about the second building block of personal finance journey, that's insurance. I'll see you guys soon.